Okay, uh, so we've got a 50 kilogram iron block at 80 degrees Celsius dropped into an insulated tank that contains 0.5 meters cubed of liquid water at 25 degrees Celsius. Determine the temperature when thermal equilibrium is reached. Okay, so uh, what do we have? Let's kind of visualize this. Uh, we have water, 25 degrees C. Uh, it's liquid water. Um, it is 0.5 cubic meters of it. Uh, and then we've got a 50 kilogram block that is at 80 degrees C. All right, it is dropped into the water. So we've got this block, this 50 kilogram block at 80 degrees C, the 25 degrees C water. But, but eventually, eventually, they come to uh, the same temperature, right? The same temperature, uh, and that's the T, let's say T2, that we don't know. Okay. Well, I think there's that, you know, the energy, the heat transfer, heat's going to go from the um, block to the water, right? From the block to the water. Uh, so let's think about the uh, Q plus W equals delta E of our system. Let's think about the conservation of energy in our system. All right. It said it is an insulated tank. That means that there's no, no Q into or out of the tank. Now, there is going to be a Q in between the two of these, right? The block is going to let out some heat. The, it's going to be absorbed by the water. Uh, but there's no Q into and out of our whole system. In fact, let's kind of think about this. Let's say that this is our system right here. This is our system right here. This is our system right here. There's no heat transfer into or out of the system, but there is some internal Q in between the two. All right? Does it make sense, and this is all like in my other classes when we talk about internal forces, one of them feels equal and opposite what the other one feels. If the um, heat that goes out of the block is the same heat that goes into the water, then they're equal and opposite. If we look at both of them, there's no Q, right? There's no Q. And I don't think I really uh, explained that too well. But because we're looking at our whole system together, because we're looking at the block and the water together, there's no Q. There's only an internal transfer, uh, and one of them is positive, one of them is negative. So, so, so there's a total of, of no heat transfer Q. All right, there's also no work done right here. There's no... Um, there's no... Um, paddle wheel, no voltage, no springs, no work done on the system. All right. So it's really the zero is equal to the change in energy of the block and the change in energy of the water, right? Or maybe we, we call one of them, right? Maybe bring one of them to the other side of the equation and say that the change in energy of the block is negative the change in energy of the water. I probably went all the way around the block just, just, to, just to say that. And you probably, you probably knew that, right? Because this is insulated and there's no heat crossing the boundary, there's no work crossing the boundary, then the energy that one lets off is the energy that the other one absorbs. All right, the delta E of the block is the delta E of the water. Because these are solids, then these are delta U's. And if it didn't occur to you to use specific heats, uh, we have, um, there's like a change in temperature, right? There's a change in temperature. And so I think that makes sense to, to use the MC delta T of one equals the negative MC delta T of the other. And this is kind of a common uh, type of problem where we have two things, you know, one's letting off heat, the other's absorbing heat. Occasionally, if it's not insulated, you might have a Q out, out here, 
um, of Q that is escaping or um, entering the system. But if, if it's insulated, then the MC delta T of one equals the negative MC delta T of the other one. All right, so let's look at the block. What is the mass of the block? All right, so left-hand side of this equation is the block. What's the mass of the block? They told us 50 kilograms. What is the C? What's the specific heat of the block? This is a uh, iron block. This is a solid iron block. Table A, uh, table A3 for iron. Let's go to our property tables. Table A3. Let's see if we can find iron here. Yeah, 0.45 kilojoules per kilogram K. 0.45 kilojoules per kilogram K. 0.45 kilojoules per kilogram K. And what is the delta T? Well, I don't know the T2, but I do know the T1 was 80 degrees C. Now, should I change that to Kelvin because that's Kelvin? Well, delta T's in Kelvin are the same as delta T's in Celsius. So I'm just going to leave that in Celsius. Okay, and that equals negative the mass of the water. This is where it gets tricky because we are not told the mass of the water. We're told the volume of the water. Uh, do you remember kind of what we might could do if we want the mass, but we know we're told the volume? Maybe we could use specific volume. And this doesn't really give us too much information, but I'm going to uh, kind of come to the side here. If the volume is 0.5 cubic meters and the specific volume, I'm going to estimate it at VF at, we're told the temperature of 25 degrees C, at 25 degrees C uh, for water. So this is liquid water. Uh, go to our property tables, table A4, 25 degrees C. Estimate this to be 0.001003. 001003. So let's go back here. 0 0.001003 meters cubed per kilogram. So about how, how much mass do we have? Mass would be big V over little b. V do, do the uh, units work out? 0.5 meters cubed over 0 0.001003 meters cubed per kilogram. Uh, yeah, the, the meters cubed can't stop. Kilograms is in the denominator, in the denominator. So yes, I've got a mass of uh, just a little bit under uh, 500, I'm going to call it 500 uh, kilograms, 500 kilograms. All right, yeah, we'll leave it right there, 500 kilograms. All right, what is the C of water? What is the C of water? Go to the property tables, table A3. Uh, do we have some, look, yeah, water right here. Uh, the C, uh, at different temperatures, um, so the C at 25 degrees C, which is what it starts at, 4.18, it ends, we don't know where it ends, but you know, even if it got up to 50 or 75, but we're still at 4.18, so we're going to use 4.18. 4.18 kilojoules per kilogram K. And then I'm going to multiply right here T2, which I don't know, minus 25. T2, which I don't know, minus 25. This is just one equation with one unknown. So maybe you could you want to isolate T2. Uh, what I like to do, I would multiply that through and multiply that through and put all my T2s on one side. So I've got something T2. I'm, I'm going to kind of skip the math over here. And I'm going to put all the T2s on the left-hand side of the equation, all the numbers on the right-hand side of my equation. So I'm going to multiply that times T2 and then subtract it over to the left-hand side, that times 25, and keep it on the right-hand side. All right. See, if, make sure you can do that because you don't get the, uh, uh, the luxury of skipping the math like I just did. Uh, to get 25.6 degrees C. There we go. There's the temperature. That's the temperature that they settle on if it's insulated. All the energy, and it's only heat, all the energy uh, going out of the block 
is the energy going into the water. So a few things here. A few things here. That is very close to what the water started out. The water was only at 25. It only rose 25.6. The iron went all the way from 80 all the way down to 25.6. Why? Why is that? Well, look at the equation and look at the math, and you can see two things. The reason why, there was a lot more water than there was uh, the block. There was a lot more mass in the water than there was mass in the block. All right? And it takes, the, the C value, it takes a lot more energy to raise the temperature of water than it does to change the temperature of the block. So those two things are the reason why the um, temperature changed for the block a lot more than the temperature changed for the water. Okay. All right, but but what if what if we had this problem and it said okay find the temperature that they um, that they uh, equilibrium e that they reach thermal equilibrium at, but then what if what if it also says what is the heat transfer between the two? What is the heat transfer between the two? Well, well I said it was zero. No, no, no. This was the heat transfer out of the system into or out of the system. There is heat transfer between the two. It didn't show up in our equation because it was internal. One of them was positive heat transfer. One of them was negative heat transfer. Uh, it was equal and opposite. How could we find the heat transfer between the two to find the Q between the objects? To find the Q between the objects. It's almost like in dynamics to find an internal force. Open it up. Only look at one object or the other. Only look at one object or the other. And you would get something like Q equals MC delta T. Right? So it's really just look at, calculate MC delta T or calculate MC delta T. Uh, we would get the Q right there. Uh, and it doesn't matter if we look at the water. Or if we look at the block, one is, yes is going to be positive, one is yes is going to be negative, um, but that just, the positive means it's going into the system, the negative means it's going out. Okay? All right.